Welcome to Seriously Read a Book. My name is John, and today we are reading Junie B. Jones is a Graduation Girl by Barbara Park, illustrated by Denise Brunkus. This is part two, chapters four, five, and six. Here we go, you ready? Chapter four is called Cats and Gowns. I skipped to the door of room nine, then my whole face got happy, because guess who was talking to my teacher? It was Gus Valoni, that's who, and Gus Valoni is my favorite janitor. I zoomed right over to that guy. Gus Valoni, Gus Valoni, it is a joy to see you, I said, and so what brings you here anyway? Gus Valoni patted my head. I had an important delivery to make, sis, he said. Just then my bestest friend Lucille came rushing up to me. She pointed to a big stack of boxes. It's cats and gowns, Junie B, she shouted. Gus Baloney brought us cats and gowns. She twirled me all around. I heard him talking to the teacher. The cats and gowns are right there in those boxes. Everyone is getting one for graduation, she said. I jumped up and down at that wonderful news, because who doesn't love cats? That's what I would like to know. Cats and gowns, I hollered. Cats and gowns, hollered room nine. Mrs. sat down in her chair real slow. Then Gus Valoni patted her shoulder and he said the word, good luck. Mrs. said for room nine to please stop shouting. I'm sorry, boys and girls, but Lucille did not hear me correctly. She said, no one in room nine is getting a cat and gown for graduation. Room 9 did a loud groan. Uh, then what are we getting exactly? I said. Caps and gowns, said Mrs. You're all getting a cap and gown for graduation, not cat and gown. No, 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 said Lucille. I heard you say cat, teacher. I know I did, I know I did. Mrs. said for Lucille to hush. Then she passed out the boxes to all the children. I looked inside my box, real curious. Then I kept looking and looking because something was not right in there. My cap got run over by a truck, I think, I said. It is a big square flat so. Mrs. laughed. And then she came to my table and she unfolded my cap and she put it right on my head. Hey, what do you know? It fits, I said. After that, all of us put on our caps and gowns and we skipped all around the room, only not Lucille, because she was still upset about the cat issue, of course. And here's a picture of Junie B and her classmates skipping around in all of their graduation wear. Doesn't that look fun? Yeah, they're having a great, oh, except not Lucille. Lucille is very upset there. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever graduated from anything? Did you like it? Yeah. I've graduated from a few things in my time. It's a fun thing to look forward to, that's for sure, don't you think? And if you haven't graduated from anything, is there anything that you look forward to graduating from? All right, here we go. Pretty soon the bell was gonna ring, and so Mrs. made us put our outfits back in our boxes. I'm going to let you take these home with you today, she said, but please do not play with them on the bus. And don't play with them at home either. These caps and gowns are white, okay? And white material gets soiled very easily. I know it, Mrs. I said. I know white material gets soiled easy because one time my grandpa Frank Miller spilled beer on his new white tie and you can still see beer splots on that thing. Mrs. looked and looked at me. Then she sat back down at her desk very quiet and she waited for the bell to ring. Chapter five, a million bucks. Me and my bestest friend named Grace rode the bus home together. We held our boxes very tight on our laps and we didn't open them. We are being careful about our graduation gowns, aren't we, Grace? I said, we are being careful not to soil them. Yes, said that Grace, we are. I looked down at my box. I am very proud of us for not opening these things, I said. I am very proud of us too, said that Grace. We rode and rode. I did a sigh. <sighs> it's too bad we can't just peek at them a little bit though. 
Isn't it, Grace? I said, one teensy peek wouldn't even hurt anything, I bet. That Grace didn't say anything. I tapped on her. Okay, here's what I'm thinking, Grace. I'm thinking we should do one little peek and that's all. What do you say, friend? Grace made her voice very loud. No, Junie B, no, we are not allowed to. Can't you follow orders, huh? Do you want to soil these things? I did a huffy breath at her. But peeking will not even soil them, Grace, I said back. Peeking is just looking with your eyes, only faster. Only too bad for me because Grace kept on saying, no, no, no. And so I had to wait and wait for that stubborn girl to get off the bus before I could peek. After she was gone, I looked in my box zippity quick. And what do you know? I didn't even soil anything. I got off the bus and I ran to my house. My grandma, Helen Miller, was babysitting my brother. She was feeding him a snack in his high chair. Grandma Miller, Grandma Miller, I got my cap and gown. It's right here in this box, I said. Would you like me to try it on for you, Grandma, huh? Would you? Grandma Miller clapped her hands. Of course I would, she said real thrilled. Try it on right now. Okie doke, I said. Then I quick put on my cap and gown and danced all around. See me, Grandma? See what I look like? I look like a graduation girl, I said. I hopped around Ollie's high chair. My teacher said not to play in this, but hopping is not the same as playing, I said. Just then I heard the front door open, and hooray, mother was home early from work. Her whole mouth came open when she saw me. Oh my goodness, she said, look how cute you are. I know it, mother, I know I am cute. I said, I look like a million bucks in this get up. I twirled all around in front of her. See me twirling, mother, twirling is not the same as playing. I said. After I stopped twirling, I fell down on the floor. <sighs> Falling on the floor is what comes after twirling. It cannot be helped normally. Mother picked me up. Maybe you should take this off before you get it dirty. She said, no mother, no. I said, I want to keep it on. Please let me, please, please. Have you ever done that kind of thing? Have you ever begged by saying, please, please, please? Does any of this sound familiar? <laughs> I quick ran to Ollie's high chair and I ducked down behind it. Ollie peeked around at me. He had sloppy on his face. I am not a sloppy baby like Ollie. I said, I won't get this dirty, I promise. But mother shook her head. I'm sorry, Junie B. But it's not a good idea to play in your gown, she said. After that, mother and Grandma Miller blocked the high chair. I couldn't run away again. Shoot, I said. I am surrounded. Mother took my graduation outfit off of me and she put it back in the box. And then she put the box way on top of the refrigerator. There's a picture of Junie B's mother putting the graduation gown on top of the refrigerator. Have any ideas about why she might put it there? Let's store it up here for safekeeping, she said. Let's not, I said real growly. Mother made squinty eyes at me. Then she took me by my arm and she marched me to my room, because that woman has no sense of humor, apparently. She shut my door and left. I flopped on my bed real glum. My stuffed animals were very glum, too. Everybody thinks I am a sloppy baby. But I'm not, I said. I don't think you're a sloppy baby, said my stuffed elephant named Philip Johnny Bob. I don't think you're a sloppy baby either, said my raggedy Ann named Ruth. My raggedy Andy named Larry did a sigh. I wish your mother didn't put that cap and gown box on top of the refrigerator, he said. Me too, said Philip Johnny Bob. I wish you could get it down from there so all of us could see it. After that, I thought and thought. Then I lifted up his soft ear and I whispered, maybe I can. 
There's a picture of Junie B. Jones lifting up Philip Johnny Bob's ear and whispering into it. Chapter 6. Pooped and Thirsty. Do you think something good is going to happen in this chapter? Let's find out. The next morning, my grandpa Frank Miller came to babysit. I love that babysitter very much, because he doesn't even follow the rules. That's why. Grandpa Miller let me fix my own breakfast. I fixed two waffles, and three marshmallows, and a bowl of cheese curls. And guess what else? My grandpa let me pour my own grape juice, and I didn't spill one single drop. See, Grandpa? See how careful I am? I said. I am not a sloppy baby, right? Right, he said. My eyes looked up at the refrigerator. I hopped down from my chair. All righty, Frank. I guess I'll be getting out of your hair now, I said. If you'll just hand me that box from the top of the refrigerator, I will be on my way. Just then, baby Ollie started to cry. Grandpa Miller patted him. I tapped my foot. Yeah, only I'm waiting, Grandpa, I said. Finally, Grandpa Miller stood up and got my box. He started to look inside, only all of a sudden, Ollie did a loud squeal. Ooh. This is a picture of Grandpa Frank Miller handing a box to Junie B. Jones and noticing that baby Ollie is throwing a fit. This is all going according to plan for Junie B. Jones, don't you think? And he put his whole bowl of cereal right on his head. Oh, that's what's going on with baby Ollie. Look at that. He's very happy. He's very proud of himself for pouring cereal all over his own entire self. Oh my goodness, hollered my grandpa. Then Grandpa Miller shoved the box right at me and he hurried to clean Ollie's head. I zoomed to my room, then I locked my door, and I waved my box all around. I got it, guys! I got it! I got it! I said, hooray, said Philip Johnny Bob. Hooray, hooray, said Raggedy Ruth and Raggedy Larry. After that, I sat those guys on my bookshelf, and I put on my graduation gown. See me, friends? I said, see how cute I look? I am a graduation girl, see? Wowie, wow, wow, they hollered. After that, I danced and skipped and hopped and twirled because they wouldn't stop cheering, that's why. Finally, I flopped on my bed. Okay, that's enough, people. I said, I am pooped and thirsty. Me too, said Raggedy Larry. I am pooped and thirsty too. I wish we could get something to drink, said Raggedy Ruth. Just then a brainstorm came right in my head. I sat up very straight. Hey, wait a second. I just learned how to pour grape juice without spilling a drop, I said. And so I can go get us some maybe. Yes, said Philip Johnny Bob. Yes, yes, said Raggedy Ruth and Raggedy Larry. I hurried to my door and I listened in the hall. Grandpa Miller was giving Ollie a bath. Shh! I whispered to my friends. You wait here, I'll be right back. After that, I tippy-toed to the kitchen speedy quick and I poured us a cup of grape juice and I tippy-toed right back again. And so that is the end of part two of Junie B. Jones is a Graduation Girl by Barbara Park, illustrated by Denise Brunkus. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe and click the bell. And you'll get notifications when we upload new videos. The next video to be uploaded is part three, which is chapter seven to the end. Do you think anything good is about to happen? As Junie B. takes grape juice back into her room where she has her white graduation gown? We'll find out! Come back next time! All right, have a great week. I'll see you soon.